20 years for man behind Hulk's call that led to fatal shooting. Good. <laughs> Fucking good. Wichita, Kansas, I think that's Kansas. Uh, a California man was sentenced Friday to 20 years in prison for making bogus emergency calls to authorities across the US, including one that led police to fatally shoot a Kansas man following a dispute between two online players over a dollar fifty bet in the Call of Duty World War Two video game. I can remember when all of this went down actually. Yeah, Keemstar and everybody was covering it. Basically he even actually had this guy on the show as well and just see from the interview this was in the aftermath of the guy getting killed and it came out that it was this guy, uh, Ty Tyler R. Barris, it was him that had done it and he was just completely, utterly unremorseful he was so unremorseful, he was just sort of like well it wasn't me that pulled the trigger and all that type of shit man, the guy was just, an, a, like you could tell all the way through that interview, the guy was just a complete sociopath man, he didn't care he did not give a fuck. Like, a family, like, fucking lost their son, their dad, their brother, all that shit, because this guy wanted to be a little edgy cunt online. Uh, US District Edge... <laughs> District Edge, yeah. US District Judge Eric Melgren sentenced Tyler R. Barris, 26, under a deal in which he pleaded guilty in November to a total of 51 federal charges related to fake calls and threats. The plea agreement called for a sentence of at least 20 years, well over the 10 years recommended under sentencing guidelines. Prosecutors believe it is the longest prison sentence ever imposed for the practice of swatting, a form of retaliation in which someone reports a false emergency to get authorities, particularly a SWAT team, to descend on an address. And it's just, I think swatting is probably one of the worst internet trends that has ever happened. I mean, see, see, see if you find someone's address and, like, you order like 20 pizzas or something to or you ordered them a strippergram or I think I can't remember the guy's name but there was a streamer who actually got a hooker sent to his house then it's a bit of shit that you're wasting people's time and you might be you know screwing with a business a little bit by you know making them waste pizzas or food that you order but that there, you know, there, there's humour in that in the sense of nobody's gonna get fucking killed right and also the fact is you know the world is gonna be fine if a pizza man's time gets wasted, right? If you're wasting the time of the SWAT team, the SWAT team are there to literally save lives. They're there as a fast response unit to basically go and, you know, someone could have a fucking hostage, you know, someone could be about to get murdered. That's what the SWAT team's for, and by you taking the SWAT team away from their job, you're putting people's lives at risk. So, a pizza delivery man, yeah, fine. Nobody's going to fucking die because of that. But a SWAT team... Not only could you get the person in the house killed, which is what this fucking retard did, someone else could be killed by proxy because the SWAT team weren't available to go and save someone else if there was another incident because they were too busy wasting their time on this bullshit. Uh, Melgren said the case went into uncharted legal territory and the law has not caught up with technology and the charges didn't address the severity of what happened. Well, that's a bit true, actually. The internet has actually caused so many laws to get changed. That's one thing that I've noticed. The 2017 death of 28-year-old Andrew Finch... Jesus Christ, was that 2017? That doesn't feel like it was that long ago. I, I feel like a fucking boomer. Drew national attention to Swatton, but Barris had made dozens of such calls before and that he was known as the guy on Twitter that is good at this. His attorney, Richard Federico, said... Pro. It's probably not a good thing for your defence attorney to say. Fuck's sake. <laughs> it's like if, you, if you, he was defending you for a murder, and he's like, he's well known as the man who's very good at murdering. <laughs> I think I know... <laughs> See how the sentencing guidelines said 10 years, but even after a deal, he got 20 years. I was a bit confused by that, but after that statement from his lawyer, I think... <laughs> I think I know what went wrong. Fucking hell. Uh, authorities say an Ohio gamer recruited Barris to SWAT a Wichita gamer, but that the address they used was old, leading police to Finch, who was not involved in the video game or the dispute. 
Barrist called Wichita police from Los Angeles on December 28, 2017 to falsely report a shooting and kidnapping at that Wichita address. Finch answered the door and an officer officer shot the unarmed man. I think there was footage of it, actually. I think it was a body cam. Or were they filming from inside the house? I've seen footage. I'm not going to look it up because I don't want to see an innocent man get shot. Barris apologised to Finch's family on Friday, saying he takes full responsibility for what happened. Well, that's not what he fucking said when he was on drama alert. He basically was sitting there acting like his conscience was completely fucking clear because I'm not the guy that pulled the trigger. Right? Fucking, it's fake. He was just doing that shit to get less of a sentence. He's not fucking sorry. He's sorry he got caught. The retard was completely fucking unremorseful. If I could take it back, I would, but there is nothing I can do, Barris told the court. I am so sorry for that. Federico described Barris as a loner who found solace in the gaming community. Oh, fuck's sake, this whole thing. As he became a serial swatter. His best friend is someone he knows only online, Federico said. His father died when he was young and his mother abandoned him. Outside the courthouse, Finch's sister, Dominica Finch, said Barris got what he deserved, but that she also wants to see the police held accountable. Finch's family has sued the city of Wichita and the officers involved. The police have said the officer who shot Finch thought he was reaching for a gun because he moved his hand towards his waistband. Prosecutors declined to charge the officer. Yeah, well, of course they would. Now, I completely understand that due to guns being so widely available in America, that American police have a much harder time of it. You know, their lives are at range. You know, they need to they need to be fast. They need to think quickly. It's just that the problem is they, they, get, they get away with a lot, don't they? American police. They they do get away with a lot. I mean, I've seen, I've seen loads of cases, like especially with the guy, who, I, f- I forget the guy's name, the guy that they, they they literally fucking choked to death on the ground and everything, right? Like, I, I totally understand that the American police need to be a bit more, you know, a, a bit more aggressive when it comes to defending themselves because, you know, if, if the criminal reaches for manages to reach for his gun before you can pull the trigger, then just, you know, that that's you, you know, you're you're not coming home that night, but, you know, they, they do get away with a lot. They do get away with a lot. Just checking this here actually because I've lost my fucking place now. Uh, Sedgwick County District Attorney Mark Bennett defended that decision. I am very much sympathetic to the Finch family, but at the end of the day, my determination has to be in what the law allows, Bennett said. Barris's prosecution in Wichita consolidated other federal cases that had been filed against him in California and the District of Columbia involving similar calls and threats. Bennett also said Friday that he would dismiss state charges including involuntary manslaughter because Barris would be getting more prison time from the federal charges than he could get in state court. Oof, right. (laughs) He made sure to get his maximum sentence possible. That's what my my prosecutor actually tried to do to me. My prosecutor, uh, halfway through the trial, tried to change my charge to a more uh, serious one. Where instead of the maximum sentence being a year in jail, I could have got five years in jail. That's something that he tried to do. Aye. Fucking hell. The FBI recognised Swatton as an emerging threat as early as 2008, uh, nothing, not, noting it had become commonplace among gamers. It's not so much anymore, because I think everyone's starting to grow up a little bit. Because I think that after this situation with what happened, you know... I'm hoping this guy getting 20 years will like stop people from doing it because I've, I even said I've said for a long time when it when we swatting it's only going to be a matter of time before somebody dies and fucking here you go so I mean I'm hoping that this will you know put people off doing it in the future because it is, it's a shitty thing it is just a shitty thing we hope that this will send a strong message about swatting, which is a juvenile and senseless practice, US Attorney Stephen McAllister told reporters. We'd like to put an end to it within the gaming community and in any other contact. Swatting, as I've said before, is not a prank. Yeah, yeah that's fair. The intended target in Wichita, Shane Gaskell, 20, and the man who allegedly recruited Barris, 
Casey Vil Viner, 19, of North College Hill, Ohio, are charged as co-conspirators. Right. I can understand the guy that got Barris to make the call, but why Why the intended target? Authorities say Viner provided Barris with an address for Gaskell that Gaskell had previously given to Viner. Authorities also say that when Gaskell noticed Barris was following him on Twitter, he gave Barris that old address to ta and taunted him to try something. Oh dear. Hmm. Okay. Mm, I'm still not I'm still not sure how I feel about him getting charged for that. That's a different kind of speech. Can you get charged for inciting violence upon yourself? That's a new one. Even though when he should have known that there would have been people living at his address now that he had moved out. And that they would be getting the brunt of it. He might have. He, I think that might be what they're going to nail him on, the fact that the guy's a well-known swatter. He baits the swatter into going in an address, pretending it's him, knowing fine well that there was other people in there that would then be subject to it. So I think that's probably what they're going to try and nail him on. Uh, Viner and Gaskell pleaded not guilty of charges including conspiracy to obstruct justice, wire fraud and other counts. Viner has notified the court he intends to change that plea at a hearing scheduled for Wednesday. Gaskell's trial has been delayed to April 23rd amid plea talks with federal prosecutors. I do hope this sets an example because I mean we all we all like trolling, we all like taking the piss and playing pranks on people, you know, like ordering a hooker to someone's door, ordering pizzas to someone's door or a you know, a stripogram or something, like, yeah, whatever, there's comedy in that, there is comedy in that, and the, to, be, to be fair, there's quite funny pranks, but uh, SWAT team, for the reasons I outlined earlier, someone could get killed, and I've, I've said for ages, someone's eventually going to die in a SWAT, and it fucking happened, and also, if the SWAT team, SWAT, SWAT team, if the SWAT team are away dealing with this bullshit on bogus calls, then what if they get a genuine call and they're not available as a fast response unit? And then someone dies as a result, you know, hostages get killed or something. So I'm hoping that this kind of lets, makes everybody aware that it's a shitty thing to do and uh, it should stop. And ho hopefully, I'm not saying this with any kind of fucking confidence at all, am I? Hopefully this serves as an example as to why that should be and just hopefully, hopefully people fucking stop doing this.